Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just read The Adventure of the Sussex Vampire by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is a part of my read-along series in book club with Steve Donahue. We are reading murder mysteries in the month of March, and we are reading all the Sherlock Holmes short stories. And the last few cases have been rocky, and the pendulum has been dramatically swinging both ways. And I'm, I'm happy to say this was a return to form. It, it, felt, it felt like a typical Sherlock Holmes short story set in that kind of golden, um, magical mystical, uh, larger-than-life, um, Sherlockian world. Uh, a, a world that feels like um, a parallel world or um, an extension, some, some adjacent reality where these fantastical crimes happen and social issues and um, uh, systemic um, viewpoints and large form issues aren't really um, a great concern. It's just these particular strange moments and uh, we just have this fantastical character that solves them. This story um, involves vampires, so we have uh, the, the Sussex vampire, uh, and it has a, a, a moment or uh, a detail which I, I feel like as a reader of these short stories is something that comes up uh, very often um, um, as the reader participates in, in the story. and. It involves the theatricality of Sherlock. But it starts with uh, Sherlock getting a letter and um, it's someone reaching out to him. It's a firm reaching out to him about a case uh, that involves a vampire. And they're saying, um, this is really outside of our wheelhouse, outside of our ballywick. Maybe this is more along the lines of the kind of case that you would solve. And then there's another uh, letter or telegram. And um, Sherlock is reading these to Watson. The, the second one, before he reads it, uh, Sherlock makes a point to say, and you're mentioned, Watson. And Watson says, what? What do you mean? And so it's, it's, it's a neat detail, uh, just like an added uh, bit of um, dry, uh, drama that uh, we're going to read the case, see the strange thing that's happened, happening or happened, and also be curious about what's the connection between an, another tale of the week and Watson. It turns out it's not much, but... Uh, it works to great effect, and it's uh, someone reaching out uh, to Sherlock, saying that he's recently married. He um, he, he he was a widower. He had um, a, a wife and a son. Uh, the, the wife had died. He had remarried and had a new baby, and the 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 new um, the the new wife and the new um, mother has been acting. Um, strangely, violently, supernaturally, a vampire-ish. Um, so there, there's a son uh, from his um, first marriage that the wife has been caught by the maid um, beating and assaulting. And an instance where the maid sees the wife biting into the flesh of a baby, like a newborn baby, and we get, we get these horror elements and vampire elements. Uh, the, the, the maid 
relays this to the, the husband. Um, he takes it very seriously and with um, a great amount of gravity, but um, it seems so unbelievable that he doesn't take immediate action until he sees it himself. He sees the, the, the baby there uh, screaming and crying, the mother right over the baby. Um, he can see when she pulls her head up that there's blood on the baby's um, cheek or neck. She turns around and has blood on her mouth. And he has to take immediate action. Uh, puts her in a room, has the maid hold her um, away, has the the baby taken care of um, caused such alarm that he, he took this story um, into the hands of Sherlock. And he's telling this, and then at the very end mentions that uh, the person that the, the husband um, and the person that's um, relaying this story through a letter or a telegram was an old school chum of Watson. And uh, Scott uh, Watson says, "Oh, oh yeah, old, old, uh, big so and so. He was a three quarter." And I love that um, the three quarter reference isn't further um, explained, and it might be because um, in the time period that it was written. It wouldn't be necessary the way that if, if someone said um, a quarterback, it wouldn't be necessary to add any more additional information. It would, it would be strange to say um, a quarterback who is a football player who um, at the line of scrimmage receives the ball and then throws the ball or who decides to run the ball and he's sort of the leader of the offensive line. That's a quarterback. Uh, but specifically, uh, the three-quarter term is also a reference to an older short story, um, a Sherlock story. So it, it felt like a little bit of a connection, but uh, that's how the guy knows Watson. That's how he knew to uh, contact Sherlock. Uh, he shows up. He explains. Um, what had happened, the, the, the wife is now um, delirious and uh, locked up in a room, the maid is taking care of her, and the maid is also taking care of um, this baby that's being uh, bitten by the mother, and um, the child is kept apart because uh, he's been beaten uh, by his stepmother, and uh, Sherlock um, shows up to the house. Sherlock and Watson um, arrive. They're going to figure out what's what's going on. And the detail, the, 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 the one aspect of the story that I just loved, I, I, I thought it was so brilliant, was um, Watson's old friend, the person that came to him um, because of all these fantastical things. And it's a it's a vampire story and all that. He, he came to Sherlock. Well, he's impatient and doesn't have time to indulge in Sherlock's theatricality. And so, so many of these stories, Sherlock will hint that he's figured it out. Aha, I know the whole story. I have a few little threads to button up, but I, I know exactly what happened, and I'm not going to tell anybody, I'm not telling you, Watson, I'm not going to say a thing until I uh, run off, have a flurry of telegrams, uh, run around London's underground, uh, do all of my fantastical things, because you're all going to be so impressed when I, when I solve it, and it's... Um, uh, undoubtedly the, the the resolution and it's nothing like that instead we have someone that's like really seriously concerned he has two children one's being beaten by his new wife he has a little baby being bitten by his wife and mother and 
He also has his wife who is uh, sick and delirious. So his entire life, his whole household, the whole family is falling apart. And he doesn't have time for Sherlock when he has these little little moments. He's at the house and goes, ah, well, that's very interesting. Hmm. And the husband goes, well, what? And Sherlock says, oh, no, I, I, I didn't figure anything out. I figured everything out back at Baker Street. Now I'm just sewing up these loose ends. I don't want to say anything until um, everything's resolved. And the husband's saying, no, no. If, if, if you figured it out, tell me. What's this insertion of drama? And I love, I love that. It's an aspect of all of these short stories which impresses and entertains uh, the reader and Watson. Uh, but such a genuine uh, human realistic moment of um, a character often set in some sort of tragedy or... Um, dramatic, serious situation, um, acting rather uh, lighthearted and comical and, um, like, like I keep saying, th theatrical, hiding things, um, which, which is great. But it's, it's nice to have this moment where you have a character that is, is, is just... Um, besides them beside themselves in, in their, their own um, very serious situation and just says T tell tell me tell me what happened uh, and th th there's a few moments that this happens and uh, Sherlock has to be um, extremely reluctant and uh, withholding um, and like some of these stories where you have just an impossible, um, fantastical premise. It, th th this woman's a vampire. Sherlock just dismisses that out of hand. There's no supernatural in this world. Um, we have the the older boy, the, the, the boy from the first... Uh, marriage, when Sherlock arrives, there's um, a poor dog that has recently become crippled, which had not been mentioned um, earlier in the um, catalog of um, outrageous um, behaviors that have happened in the house. Um, the, the mother's um, sequestered in the bed, the little baby is being guarded, and it comes down to the maliciousness of a jealous, jealous little, little boy. And the mother wasn't biting into the baby, sucking poison out of the baby, saving the baby. Um, the dog had been poisoned. The mother was withholding all of this because um, the, the true... perpetrator was her husband's own child who was acting with cruelty and uh, malice and we get a very simple st straightforward uh, fantastical explanation it's all um, claustrophobic and concentrated and concise um, there, there's no long exposition about um, sailors from Australia or women from America or soldiers in South Africa. Um, it's just the, this um, bottled, contained uh, mystery where we're only given um, the facts and circumstances that create the mystery, and also solve them. It's great. It's, ex it's exactly what you want from one of these uh, Sherlock Holmes 
short stories. And what a relief from the last one, um, The Adventure of the Three Gables, which was um, by far the, the worst short story that I had read. Anyway, uh, so uh, The Adventure of the Sussex Vampire by uh, Doyle. Let me know if you've read it. Let me, um, let me know if you've read it. Thank you for watching, and um, please leave a comment if you would like, and take care.